to smile. But guess what? I will actually smile because of one or two reasons. Because Absa, call it a Barclays Bank, is actually saying that you can start off your year by saving some good amount with what they call the access account. It's something you need. It's for you, Omuntuwa It's you, Mufunampola. It's you, the student. And it's you, the hustler. So just bump into any Barclays Bank branch today and make sure you actually get some uh, some account there. You All you need is just a national ID. You debate about what you to see what uh, uh, national ID and actually your, your, your passport size photo. But today we're discussing about security. It's very absurd. Last night we had um, bomb blasts in Nairobi. That was in Riverside uh, Park. It's very absurd. The lives we lost there. May their souls rest in peace and we send our heartfelt sympathy to the families. But as East Africa, we are asking a question that as Al Shabaab is celebrating and it's saying that, well, it's them who are responsible for this bombing. How secure are we as Ugandans? How secure are we as Kenyans, as Rwandese, as Burundians, as, as Tanzanians? It's a question of a region. Every now and again, when a terror threat happens at the doorstep of a neighbor, it's about to actually spill back to your home. Currently, our Ugandan borders are all all on alerts, our antennas are up like by far. But should we just put them by far when we hear such things happening? Today I'm actually coming to you live from Mubs here in Kampala. We're discussing something to do with security. And I want to start with the Joffrey here. Joffrey happens to be the security guard here at Mubs. Joffrey, good morning. Yes, good morning. Let's start with a simple thing, Joffrey. What do you make of security in Uganda from your own perspective? Uh, first of all, I'd like to say, um, I salute the security forces mm. in the Uganda, the Uganda police, mm. the army. They are really trying to do all it takes to make sure that Ugandans are, are safe. Mm. However, I would like to also um, uh, say that security is not about Uganda police, it's mm. not about UPDF, it's mm. about everyone. It's about you and me. Mm. So if we work together, then security in Uganda, mm. we shall totally live in. If you as a security um, personnel, what is one of that outstanding challenge you keep facing day and night, day and night, like it keeps coming back? I think the biggest challenge we face is uh, the public. Mm. They tend to ignore the security measures that the mm. police and the army and... Even us here in MOBS, uh, mm. you try to tell someone that, you know, this is what you're supposed to do. These are the security procedures. People tend to think that uh, you're simply trying to waste their time. And mm. ABCD, for example, at the checkpoints, mm. we have made sure that every car, everyone who comes in, all those cars are checked and mm. then they are registered. But in the process of doing that, people think you're, there, you're wasting their time and all that. But for us as security, we don't mm. take chances. Well, there you have it. Uh, he's actually saying many of you have this attitude of, uh, do you know me? <laughs> like, Jeffrey, you know me. It is me. It is Andrew. I always pass here. Do you think that mentality of thinking we know people who actually use the same road every day is another gap terrorists are actually using? It's not the case. Mm. Well, me knowing you, mm. you knowing me, mm. does not mean I shouldn't do my role. As I a security you. person, I hear you. you get. Mm. You might come now. We interact. We chat. When you get out, you will mm. come back with something else. Mm. And for us as security, we don't take chances. Mm. However much we have been chatting this morning, and then mm. you come in the afternoon, mm. you must follow the same procedures yeah. you followed when you came previously. So I think that's where the biggest challenge is. Mm. Some people tend to take that, you know, friendship. They tend mm. to take friendship to work, mm. and most especially with security. Mm. With security, don't take chances. It doesn't matter whether you know someone, whether mm. someone is your father, whether someone and you see your mother, mm. assuming you're my father and you just come and you go. Yeah, no, 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 no. Come on, Geoffrey. Assuming I'm your son, <laughs> you're my father. Yes. <laughs> because you might be like, no, you're my son. Why are you checking me? It's mm. not the case. Leave those things at home. Oh, I'm at work. Yeah. Mm. Okay? Mm. I simply meant to follow the procedures. I hear you. Uh, yes. Well, there you have it. That is Geoffrey. He has quite a very incredible perspective about security. Good morning, Yabo. Good morning. Your name? I'm Cindy Kenlira, a student uh -huh. of MOVE. Hey! Mm -hmm. Okay, we had seen the other and we missed it. Kionulire. Kion, eh? Kionulire. Kionulire. Eh, Kionulire. You're from which region? I suggest we from Bunyoro. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll go with Cindy. Eh? Okay, just, Cindy. Uh, yeah. What do you make of what happened in Nairobi yesterday? When you bring it uh, up close to Uganda, what does it mean to you? Um, about that incident. Hmm. It really is so occurred that it was so bad. Hmm. It we didn't expect about the attack hmm. and. After all, the Al Shabaab came up and were so claiming about the attack that mm. they took it on. Mm. But 
I feel security needs to be tightened up. Mm, how? And how, mm. w if I'm to look more into this government of our Uganda, mm, mm. we need to to have external people who will maybe, you know, um, supervise that people who protect us. Mm. And then as we citizens, mm. we need to take caption of ourselves mm -hmm. and we need to gather ourselves and keep us to be alert, mm. you know? We mm. can't leave all the roles to the police people and be like, oh my God, mm. they'll take up their role. No, mm. we need... It's you girls even on. don't talk to Ascaris like, da, who, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, mm. to some people, mm. but if I'm to look at the life that is here at campus, mm. most girls party till late, mm. leaving out their life, you mm. know? We have had so many death rates around here, mm. but if you have to check the time, mm. it happens. It usually happens at midnight. Why? People do not take responsibility of their life. Mm. So you can't tell me that these bomb blasts mm. happen and find you somewhere. What are you doing at that time? At that time. Mm. So I feel our responsibility begins with us, mm. not the police. It shouldn't mm. be a blame game. Okay. Yes. Well, there you have it. That is Cindy. Okay, Cindy. She says that well, it's 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 everyone's responsibility. Uh, the guild president is actually here with us. Uh, His Excellency uh, Julius Intende. We want to know what do you make of security? Are you convinced of the security the government is offering Ugandans? Ugandans. Yes. You, you meant you said Ugandans. Yes. Ugandans. Yes. First and foremost, I want to. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning. Uh, but first and foremost, I want to appreciate the security of Uganda. Mm. The government has tried its best to make sure that our security in Uganda is quite importantly mm. uh, kept. Yeah. Mm. So not like other countries, Uganda, we are somewhere. Mm. But secondly, I think uh, people are taking a lot of uh, things for granted. So for example security itself you could go to a place and you find that the security people are taking their work for granted mm. yeah sometimes that could be because they are not facilitated or motivated mm. and they are not willing to do that very much they're supposed to do because they are not motivated anyway even the money they are being paid is actually very little mm. but I think what happened in Kenya yesterday mm. could be a cause of uh, you remember the time when they used to tell you when you're fighting with someone first know they are weak point mm. yeah and then once you get I know I, I was not violent but for you okay so that's what they used to tell you well, we, we, we're the people that went for gym and fighting. <laughs> <laughs> the people that go for fighting and boxing, yeah. they'll tell you first, understand who your opponent is. Mm. I'm a politician. Understand who your, your opponent is. Get yes. to know their weak points. Then you yes. hit that very place yeah. and then you... So I think the security, first of all, gets to know where can I attack from. Mm. So they know the weak points. They know the linings that would make and break loose so easily. Mm. And then they will come and attack that very place. Mm -hmm. And so I think security has to be kept key and important everywhere mm. and in Uganda we have taken security so so seriously but mm. now our companies that are training security personnel could now be making money mm. yeah some of them are putting out people because they want to get the money mm. they're not training them so very well mm. they're not skilling them so very well so people will go out there and do work that they are not so sure about mm. I think that's what's causing the security breaches so for example you could go to a hotel mm. and they are checking people mm. As at the gate, you will find this guy who will tell you first get out and you'll get out and then he will peep into the car and he will peep into the car and he will mm. tell you Ying that gate mm. and then someone will come with this car machine underground and maybe they in work where it works, we're not so sure. <laughs> and then they will they'll tell you enter. Then you go through some checkpoints at mm. certain certain buildings and you think this actually works and it doesn't actually work. Mm. Someone will come what is that machine called? Uh Mr. Uh, uh, Garrett. Uh, Garrett. Mm. There was some of Zungu Andrew. <laughs> the Garrett, eh? And the Garrett actually mm. didn't work. Mm. Because now you, you left your things in the pocket, you left your metals and all, mm. because of that checking for the metals. Mm. But it doesn't work because you actually have those things in there. So mm. I think in Uganda we need to get these things done very well. Mm. We need to get our work seriously. We need these companies to take their work seriously. Not just to bring out people because they want to get money, mm. but bring out people after skilling them, training them, and telling them what exactly they're supposed to be doing. Mm. I think we also need to rotate security people in security places. By rotation, what do you mean? I work night and she works day. Usually what happens is people spend a lot of years in the same position. They get so familiar and used to that place. They also get so familiar and used to the people that come in. Mm. Before you know it, this guy comes and uh, is the Badeo, is the Andro Gamboji, mm. and yeah. Abonge, clear. Yeah. Nga, nga, nga ingira wo. Yeah. The next time this guy will see, man, they don't check me once, twice, mm. thrice. The third time, this guy will come with something dangerous. But of yeah. course, you will not know because it's 
is your boy. He has yeah. been coming here every yeah, day. Yeah. So he will enter with something dangerous. Before you know it, something has happened, and you're like, but I've been checking everyone, not for remembering mm. that he's your boy, <laughs> but you're actually child. <laughs> we are live for Mobs in Kampala. We're talking about security. How secure are you, and what's your role? It's a conversation we're having here. Joining us again, of course, we have the, this is the Honorable Minister of Education at MOBS. Good morning. Anifa. Good morning. Andrew. How are you doing? I'm good. We are talking security today. What do you make of security in the country? Um, well, first of all, from mm. where this conversation is coming from, we really empathize with our, our brothers and sisters in yeah. Nairobi. Yeah. Um, what happened is really sad, yeah. and it's something that's definitely and should keep us all on our toes as yeah. East Africans, yeah. Uganda, Tanzania, East Africans, and even Africa as a yeah. whole, as a matter of fact, because we clearly understand that we are not safe. Mm. Um, I'd say security... We clearly, you understand you're not safe. We are not safe. Uh, please, d <laughs> we, we indulge me, <laughs> indulge me. <laughs> I mean, we are not safe. Mm. If something of that sort could happen in broad daylight, mm. um, well, we expect that there is security yeah. at, you know, full full time. Mm. We're not saying security works for these yeah. hours and doesn't work for these hours. Yeah. Then it means we're not safe. You and I, Andrew, right yeah. now, where yeah. we are, how certain are we? Are we, safe? <laughs> are we, safe? <laughs> we, we? We need to check into that. Oh, yeah. But um, what I want to say about security mm. um, within Uganda, but also probably in other countries, is I believe there's a gap yeah. between the people mm. and the security. Mm. And and also when it comes to the organizations, um, most in institutions simply hire security, okay. external security, mm. and then they do not take time to actually supervise that security. Your security is, you, you hear this. Uh -huh. That's a challenge, because mm. by the time any organization comes up, it has that internal security. It's yeah. a lot like having internal audit and external mm. audit. We're not mm. saying they don't work, yeah. yes? But we're saying we need those quality checks. To check, yeah? yeah. So um, when you come, when you, when you have security, external mm. security, from maybe by a certain company, mm. you know, and you expect that they are the ones who will be able Mm. to secure you throughout then mm. I mean what what do you expect yeah there's a possibility that something could take place inside mm. and it has just passed by them so we need people at every single point trying to supervise mm. and being able to ensure that everyone is actually safe yes mm. but also I just want to concur with them mm. and to concur with the guild president when he talked about remuneration mm. within Uganda <laughs> it's a it's a very big challenge yes mm. and it's something that the government really needs to dig into perhaps it believes there are Policies that actually mm. pay these constables, mm. let me mm. say, but they do not actually maybe pay them enough. These they people have, have family. They have a gun. Mm. <laughs> let me come to that. Yeah. I mean, they have they have families. They yeah. have people to feed. They have people to take care of. Yeah. Yes, and at the same time, these people are holding guns. Mm -hmm. In the possi there's a possibility that mm. if they are not getting enough mm. from their job, mm. and you come around and you just seem you're not exactly wrong, but mm. it just looks like they might be able to get something out of you. Trust me, that gun will work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And not in the sense that they will shoot you, but they could scare you. Yeah. And that's a problem because the more they keep on scaring us, the more we, we withdraw yeah. from security. So you were saying we don't like saying hi to security guards. Mm. I mean, we're also afraid of them. You, you <laughs> might say hi, say hi, say hi, and before you know it, mm. um, your, friendship <laughs> <laughs> your friendship is not going in the I right know. direction. Yeah. Yeah? So, so it's also a challenge. We mm. really need to look into that. Yeah. And but, actually but also to chip in there, to Andrew, just to mm. cut her uh, academia. academia is what yeah. in English. Yeah. Okay, now to cut her short, yeah. I think talking about not being facilitated and also remuneration, mm. you see when someone comes and just gives you something very small, mm. yeah, and uh, you know, your, your boss has not been paying you. Mm. Eh? In mobs, we are proud and mm. we, are, we, we are happy these yeah. guys are being facilitated. Mm. And they're not been paying you. Mm. You know you can easily give in. I mean, this guy will end up passing because they have mm. chipped you, so mm. it's important to talk about remuneration. Ha, there you have it. Hajat, get closer. We are still talking about security. Huh? The minute was much more like that. Good morning, Hajit. Good morning. Your name? Zahara Namgang is my name. Zahara, we're talking about security. Do you believe the gun law works in the region? Uh, in, my, in my understanding, I mm. think uh, actually the government mm. of Uganda has really done a lot. Mm. For us, uh, it has kept our security really tight. Mm. I don't think we have a problem when it comes to security mm. because among all the all the all the settings, mm. all the systems that have 
in Uganda. Mm. Security is the top guru, most. Guru. I think we are really good when mm. it comes to that point. Mm. Because uh, looking at what has happened around Uganda, neighbors, yeah. Yeah, around the neighbors, we have not had really something serious. Mm. Even if something is to happen in Uganda, mm. someone really has to take a really good plan mm. to penetrate the security. Mm. Because everywhere, even if you just woke up and did a small shake mm. of, ah, mm. I want to do something. Mm. Is a gunman around. Zahara, does this mean you trust the police officers you find in the night? Like you, you're from, maybe you're from a girl's night out. Do you trust the police officers you find on the trucks and on, on those patrols at night? Basically, me, I trust them. I trust them, like seriously. You really me, do? I trust them because I have not encountered any oh. any problem with them. Okay. The only problem we have here is. What time are you moving? Mm. The problem is coming from us. It's we have freedom of movement. Yes, yes, there is freedom of movement, but you are, you are, you are looking at your security as a person. Uh, allow yourself to move at night, mm. and what is going to happen to you later? Mm. Uh, these security people are also humans anyway, mm. and you know every time it, uh, when it's not da when it's not during day. Yeah. People kind of change character. Okay. So okay. you find a policeman <laughs> alone. I mean, they may also want to do something anyway. But in case they don't do anything, <laughs> but in case they don't do anything, in case they don't do anything, they will want to get something from you. Uh, Jeffrey, what do you make of that? <laughs> I'm coming back to you. <laughs> Jeffrey, what do you make of that? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, what I can say Do people say misuse is, guns when it gets dark? Some people. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, what I should say is mm. we are all human beings. What does and that mean? The way you behave is mm. not the way I behave. Yeah, true. Well, the police and security image, as we can all, we have all had, that mm. they are doing all it takes the, mm. to make sure that we are safe and all that. But of course, they are individuals. Mm. You remember even last time the president was very clear. He yeah. told the former IGP that we, the, they have, you've got what kawukumi mm. you understand mm. so that is basically what she's trying to talk about oh, yeah, some kawukumi. of those there are few individuals mm. who tend to go to the forces mm. with a different mind mm. get rich quick you understand yeah so those are some of the challenges and some of those things you know you cannot rule out a hundred percent you understand mm. at one point certain kind of indiscipline has to chip in mm. however good you are huh? okay. zahara however good they are someone will actually has you know, some gun will actually be misused in, in some know? time. Now, do you trust the structures government has put in place for security? When you look at a police officer walking on the street, their age bracket, the gun they're holding, the way they're dressed, do you have that feel like, yes, it's actually, you're safer? Okay, actually, when I look at it, to some extent, mm. it is a good thing. Mm. But to another extent, to a smaller extent, it's not really good. Mm. Uh, before we look at security being like, yeah, we are security men. Mm. Uh, we have the guns. Mm. You people should not do anything. Mm. Let us look at what is the relationship between the people we are trying to secure mm. and us mm. who are securing them. Mm. Let us try to draw a, to to close up that that gap. Mm. Uh, so that if in 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 any case they mm. are suspecting something, mm. they can always reach to us. Okay, mm? okay. So if that gap is still growing bigger mm. like it is right now, mm. like sometimes a security person is around because there is something that is not right, mm. they come and really use their their energy. You know power. When you mm. have power, these mm. people are given power. Power, power you mean gun, right? Yes, yeah. Okay, go ahead. To their to their to their to their, to that extent it is I power. Be sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when they are given okay, it's, it could not really be the gun, mm. but they have Even the power to charge. Yes, too. they have the power to stop mm. you from whatever you're mm. doing if they think it is wrong. Mm. But how are you stopping these people? Is mm. the is the question. Okay. So <laughs> I hear you. Well, there you have it, Minister. Maybe if you can, I can indulge you onto that. Yes. Um. Mm. So I just wanted to add on to something because mm. we've been talking about the relationship between yeah. the police and the, and the people, and, and not even just police, but mm. we mean the security, security the security agencies mm. as a whole. And so I was thinking, it's very important for police as 
a whole to yeah. actually show the people that they're actually very professional mm. in in a way that they need to adopt certain principles people need to understand that police is very inte integral like mm. their integrity needs to be high mm. because that's the only way we get to trust you mm. not based on the fact that um you know i, I see you here and there yeah. but then i need to know from mm. different areas of the country that there is actually a very high integrity in police so when yeah. i go to kitgum mm. i need to know that i will be safe mm. yes mm. um so police needs really needs to work on its systems and mm. its policies and the way it's structured mm. and there needs there need to be people within police or security agencies mm. themselves to actually be able to tell that this person mm. looks like they will damage our reputation so yeah. even if they have been trained i mean mm. people change like mm. they said people people are different yeah. so even if, even if they have been trained once yeah. there is a suspicion that you might not be able to do the best for the go. citizenry yeah. you need to be removed and mm. they need to put there someone better and at mm. the same time mm. you never know it could actually cause employment for yeah. the youth today <laughs> <laughs> there you have it let me indulge you about the foreign policy do you think uh, the foreign policy of our countries uganda kenya rwanda burundi could be a backfire there is a likelihood there could mm. be a backfire mm. usually what happens is we get a lot of people into our security uh, forces so for example i'm very sure kenya mm. has a lot of other national mm. security men in their personal yeah. security so for example somalia mm. has a lot of people part of the kenyan security mm. and usually what happens is people come in and they already know what happens in these different countries mm. and so they can be able to attack you so easily because mm. they actually understand you mm. and also they may not be able to do a lot of bad things or harm to a person they actually feel is a brother because you and I, Andrew, are brothers because mm. we're Ugandans. Mm. So I think the, 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 the foreign policy is also a, a cause for this mm. particular bit. Yeah, wow. sure. What do you make of our foreign policy? We are in Somalia the other day, we were in Central African Republic. Do you think as a nation uh, we're extending the security arm, the professional UPDF arm to the other countries? Is it in one way, you know, giving us security or... Um, if I'm to look at the foreign bit of it, mm. um, we, we see that some, some people some of these police forces actually mm. being brought into the country mm. but how sure are we that it's going to keep us safe mm. or how sure are we that it's going to help govern the real people we mm. make up from this country because mm. if I'm to look at Somalia mm. and then we look at the people who mm. try to blast mm. so I'm like okay so where is the force now coming from and mm. what try to intervene mm. but, but but i also think andrew because we have gone ahead to help a lot of countries around east mm. african as africa uganda. as yeah. uganda <laughs> there could be a possibility mm. that uh, these countries are actually uh, uh forgiving some of us mm. because yeah. we are actually yeah. helping them yeah. out so mm. for example if we send our updf mm. army men to somalia mm. even when somalia really wants to come and uh, do a lot of things in uganda it mm. may come and think about it and say no but these guys are actually you know keeping security back in our countries mm. so but even Kenya has forces in Somalia we're all in Amsterdam yeah we're all in Amsterdam mm. but you know what Uganda is doing so there's a leap ahead <laughs> I should say well there you have it it's a conversation about security how we study from home how we actually align it how safe are you what is your role to play when it comes to security Zahara if I may indulge you women of late have been um, facing a lot of attacks in the recent past we had a lot of women killings how best can we safeguard, especially the women in our country? How best can we, you know, be better? Okay. When it comes to women, mm. I think it should really start with us. Mm. Let us respect ourselves enough. Mm. Respect you mean? I mean, mm. do not move at night. Mm. Hey, that like is no I can't one. go out with my friends, like... No. I mean, we are trying to protect ourselves. Mm. There is a time... You really want to go out? Mm. There is during day. Mm. I mean, every place is free. <laughs> Get out of what? Come on, let me come to the nightlife. Huh? <laughs> so now, okay, basically, I, I don't... Andrew, do you, you see seen the <laughs> night out? I see the night out. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't go out okay. so much. But you, you, you can relate. But, you know, I can at yeah. least, but I can relate to the mm. people who mm. surround me. Eh? Yeah. But, you know, it starts with you. Mm. How do you dress? Mm. You know, you can't tell me that you pass by a policeman and he won't tap mm. at your back and be like, mm. Nyabo. Mm. Mm. You know, mm. as in, but, uh, you know? Yeah. So, it 
it starts with us. You know, you can't start walking at night, especially when you're alone. Yeah. We have had so much that goes around with women mm. at night. Mm. And you ask yourself, okay, what were you doing at this time of mm. the night? Didn't you have during day? Mm. You know, some, you, you know, you get public means mm. thinking that, oh my God, I'm going to be safe. Mm. Now that even Oba apps came mm. up mm. and safe borders, so people misuse that time that... Mm. I'll get up, you know, I'll get, I think I have something to add, don't you know? um, um, my, I mean, my, my, my opinion is, I mean, we, we can't necessarily stop ourselves from moving at night. There might be times where you actually might need to move at night. Yeah. It might be business, yeah? No, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But then the point is, can you actually make sure that when you are to move at night, mm. one, people mm. are informed. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. That's something that's very important mm. in the home, at least, that I come from. Mm. Two, are you going to use safe means of transport? Mm. I mean, we've, we've had, I don't think I've had very many cases of Uber, I don't know, mm. um, stealing people or mm. something of that sort. But you've heard so, of taxis. Uh, okay, yes, taxis, yeah. but that's public. Mm. So can you try a level best to make sure that if you're going to move at night, mm. you need to have that extra enough, maybe, money mm. to actually help you get an Uber perhaps mm. to your gate. Mm. Yes. Home. So don't don't use that, that car route home and you know you just walk it down mm. and you assume that you're safe. People are beaten up at five AM. Mm. Really when are you safe? Because if you tell me I'm beaten up at five AM, mm. I'm leaving my house at five AM to mm. go and work. So mm. when am I safe? It, meaning even if I came back at eleven, they would still beat me so really yeah, what yeah. are you what are you yeah. saying? Let, so let it's important. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like any other country like like the developed countries yeah. where they have done mm. families equip the, their girl children mm. with paper sprays. Mm. Would you not see that in Uganda? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Andrew Nekamu. Now, well, well, Andrew, um, this is what I also want to bring up front. Mm. I think security also gets back to where we come from, yeah. our localities, mm. our places of residence, where we come from. Mm. People have not taken it serious as well. Mm. You may notice that you see nowadays people do not even know who their neighbors are. Yeah. Um, talking about Montuawa and CIA, I have relatives in Munyonyo and mm. a few places around. Yeah, there's a high place. Have you come back from Kedewe, Gayaza? And what did they say? And I think yeah. people in some of these localities actually do not even know who the neighbors are. Yeah. Something can easily happen just mm. outside your gate and you do not know it's actually happening to your neighbor's kid mm. or your neighbor actually. And because you don't even know them, you don't even recognize it's your neighbor they are mm. uh, attacking. Mm. So I think we need to go back to our localities. Our else when people need mm. to get this uh, to their knowledge mm. that you see we need to get our security peak we need mm. to get these meetings always mm. at least if at all we are in these exotic localities let's get a whatsapp bro mm. yeah in case something is community happening policing. you may yes community policing you mm. may be able to call mm. but you can send a whatsapp message guys you are under your bed you will not be able to talk the guys are actually at your door mm. but you can send a whatsapp and say on my door mm. these guys are actually at mm. so i think it's important when you're under your bed you're under your bed the guilty president is stronger <laughs> when we are live from of course some moves here he says we need to actually be involved what is your role there are two things here one that actually stands out get involved security does not actually stop to all the security agencies around the country and getting a little complacent with people actually who cross by the security lines day in and day out it's another thing that is actually going to affect us as a nation but the foreign policies also need to be reviewed I understand we are in different countries with of course a peacekeeping missions but before these missions are endorsed and signed. We need to compare the notes, how safe are we at home before we actually give the other support on the other side. Then there is a question of remuneration. When people are not well facilitated, they become easy loops to actually break through to break the security you actually have. So the question is, as you're walking around the country, as you're walking around your home or your business entity, how safe are you? What is your role? Have you played your role? These are questions we're posting and pondering to you to actually have a banter with your colleagues or your friends wherever you are to check how safe you are. I'm Andrew Chama, get on to our ones and we're live from Mobs. And shortly after me, of course, Mal is coming up with the solutions where experts are going to dissect it into depth. What went wrong? Do we still have trust in our security as a region? What are the way forward with regard to security in East Africa as a region? Now take us for a break. This is Morning at 10 TV.
stadium shaking, crowd igniting super fans. Watch your local press for details on how you could win the Premier League experience of a lifetime. Amabara Gangi ni nyomu wangi Joseph. Ni mkwada mvivo energy. Ni professional driver.